Aloha. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Chris. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, I want to welcome you to First United Protestant Church of Kilo. I'm so glad that you have decided to join us for worship today. Today's worship service is about releasing our need to hold on to the past, moving toward a future in which God will provide for our every need. Let us begin today's service with our call to worship. Come today from the places of our kitchens and bedrooms, couches and temporary offices, from the viewing of our computers and phones. Wherever we are, we are called to God's presence. We are young and old, individuals and families, soft-spoken and outspoken, contemporary and traditional, multicolored and multicultural. Whomever we are, we are called into God's presence. We might be seeking love and joy this hour, compassion and forgiveness, justice and peace, or comfort and hope. Whatever we are seeking, may we find it in God's presence. Let our worship together begin. says this, sometimes the hardest part of letting go of the past is coming to terms with the fact that the, that the future you envisioned will never be. The mind wants to hold on to its fantasies, even when they are wrong, unhealthy, dangerous, even cruel. To let go of the past, you must let go of a lost future and live in the here and now. You must live in the present. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 through 15, where the Israelites complain about their present circumstances and long for the lives they once had in Egypt. Then the whole community of Israel set out from Elam and journeyed into the wilderness of Sin between Elam and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. There too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day they will gather food, and when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, by evening you will realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaints, which are against him, not against us. What have we done that you should complain about us? Then Moses added, The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning, for he has heard all your complaints against him. What have we done? Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not against us. Then Moses said to Aaron, Announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out toward the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
I have heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat to eat, and in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, It is the food the Lord has given you to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When we meet the Israelites in this scripture, they've escaped from slavery and the cruel oppression of Pharaoh by exiting Egypt through the parting of the Red Sea. When they came out on the other side of the Red Sea, the Israelites had found themselves out in the hostile terrain of the wilderness, a place that could lead to death if you were not prepared to survive in it. There was joy and celebration among the Israelites after first escaping, but after 30 days of being out in the wilderness, those joys and celebrations soon turned to the present anxieties of not having enough of what they needed to survive, food, water, and the safety that shelter would provide. Their prayers were set the hopes of reaching the promised land. But the only thing they seemed to be finding out in the wilderness was hardship. The troubles that the Israelites were facing soon turned into complaints and criticism for the very people who helped to lead them there, Moses and Aaron. They complained to Moses and Aaron. Life as a slave in Egypt was way better than the misery and hopelessness that they were now experiencing. Although they were slaves in Egypt, at least they had food. Although they had no freedom in Egypt, at least they had war. It's almost as if the Israelites' present worries about having, about not having enough of what they needed to survive, creates a sort of amnesia among them, where they've forgotten about the severe abuse and depression they were experiencing as slaves in Egypt. Instead of looking toward a future where God will provide for their every need, they were really longing for a past that was no more. Although the whole community complained to Moses and Aaron, their complaint was actually directed toward God. After all, it wasn't Moses and Aaron's idea to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. In fact, you might remember that Moses had told God several chapters earlier when he was living a quiet life as a shepherd that he was really unqualified to even do such a thing. Yet when Moses set out on this new unexpected journey that God was calling him to, he did not long for the life that he once had, but he trusted that God was going to provide for his every need on this unexpected journey. The Israelites who were traveling through the wilderness in this moment of uncertainty long not for the reordering of something new to happen. They are really longing for the past they once had. In moments of despair, worry, and uncertainty, are we really so different than the Israelites were? As the world has changed, 
from decade to decade and now year to year, how many of us have longed for some time in the past? A time when we could leave our doors unlocked in the middle of the day or even at night. A time when the church pews were filled on Sundays. A time when gun violence didn't captivate the nightly news. A time when people would talk to each other with respect. A time when life was just easier for us all. Even in this time of pandemic, we have longed for the way things once were. A time when we could hug our family members without worrying about catching a life-threatening virus. A time when we didn't have to wear a mask all the time. And long lines were only at the grocery store or when you could go into places and not have to wait at the curb. As things change, we are pushed to the uncertainty about what the future holds for us. We can sometimes romanticize about the days of old, thinking of them as being better than they are right now. We might see the present day in which we live as being worse than the past. And we might hold tightly to the belief that things were simply better back previous times. And the truth is, sometimes they were. Yet we cannot go back and stop the changes that have happened in our lives or even in our world. How we cannot go back and stop the changes that have taken place in our lives. I believe God will provide us with what we need to live through them. I believe that when we are out in places of wilderness and the future seems uncertain, that God will provide us with what we need to move on. While the future may be uncertain and even difficult at times, God does not send us to times or places where we will not be provided for. As the Israelites complain about the present and they long for the past, God tells Moses in this scripture, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. And each day the people are going to be able to pick out, pick up as much as they will need for that day. They will be able to pick up as much as they will need for that day. God tells Moses that God is not going to provide the Israelites what they would need to survive for just one day, but that God is going to provide them what they would need to survive each and every day. The food that God was going to provide them was a reminder that this is a God who is going to sustain them, provide for them, and watch over them on this unexpected journey that lies ahead. When we are out in the wilderness, we're experiencing the uncertainty of great change in our lives. We are caught between the past and the future. We are caught between what we've always known and the uncertainty of moving toward a future that is unknown. Such moments can leave us in despair because we truly have no idea what is ahead for us. Such moments can leave us with anxiety that we're not going to have enough of what we need to get by. The temptation in these moments is to stay stuck between the past the future. To be complacent, believing that we can hold on to the past that we've always known and the future that is also unfolding before us. Yet trying to have it both ways will never allow us to have a sense of faith that God is going to provide us what we need 
to go on. Since the pandemic began, I can't tell you about the number of worries that I've had about this church and the hope that we will soon be able to go back to the way we once were. I've worried that we were going to lose our connection to folks. But the truth is, we have found new ways to connect with them. I've worried that we were going to struggle financially. But the truth is, we've been okay. I've worried that we were going to lose congregants. But the truth is, we've actually gained a few new ones. I've worried about the health and lives of our, if our congregants were to come back to worship. But the truth is, our church council has stepped up to make important decisions that have protected the most vulnerable in our community. If I have been reminded of anything over these past few months, it is that God provides us with what we need. The God of our sacred scriptures is not a God of the past, but a God of the present and the future. A God who calls us to new places and into new things, into new relationships and new ways of being. A God who beckons us not to hold on to the past, but to look toward the possibility of what the future holds. God, who will not only find a way to provide for our physical needs, but a God who will meet us wherever we are to help us fulfill deeper spiritual needs. This is a God who preserves people during times of crisis, strengthens people during times of weakness, provides love for people who have no love or hope for themselves. The wilderness may be a time and place of uncertainty and even insecurity. But our journey through the wilderness is a journey of discovering who God is for us. As we journey through this time of wilderness together, through this time of uncertainty and not knowing what might come next, will we hold on to the hope of returning to the past? Or will we lay claim to the possibility that God is doing something new? Will we worry about how we're going to get by, or will we finally trust that God is going to sustain us? Will we live in fear of the worry of what lies ahead, or live imagining that something remarkable is going to happen when we emerge from this time of the wilderness? Well, the wilderness can be disorienting, and even a difficult place to be, can also be a place where we come to know God. My hope in this time of wilderness is that we will not long too deeply for the past, but come to know a God who will give us all we need as we journey toward a new time and place in the life of this church that has been promised to us.
was our time of prayer, where we lift up the joys and celebrations that might be happening in the life of this church and in the lives of our congregants, and also the struggles, worries, and concerns that folks have been wrestling with this week. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to you, open to your guidance and your love. There's so much around us that can tear at us and cause us to tremble. Keep us mindful, though, in such moments of your presence and the hope that has been given to us in Christ. Guide us as your church as we struggle to spread the good news of Christ. Keep us focused on the ministry and mission to which you have called us. Lead us forward. We know, God, there will be bumps and holes in the road along the way. But keep us from dwelling on them. Make us secure in the goals that you have placed before us. Hear our prayers for all who need your tender touch and healing in their lives. Be with those who are mourning, hurting. Guide our leaders and those of other nations so that this world might be truly as you created it to be, a world of peace, hope, and love. These are our prayers, together with those that lie in the hearts of all those who are joining us. We offer them to you, in the spirit of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who had said, not my will, but thine be done. Let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now is our time of offering. If you have been spiritually nourished by today's worship service, I want to encourage you to consider supporting the work and ministry of this church through a tithe or donation. You can now donate through our Facebook page, through our PayPal site, by simply writing a check to the church. Let us join together in a prayer of dedication for all that we will receive. Generous God, let us be renewed as we remember your goodness. You have made us in your image and placed within us the spark, the divine. May this spark call us to give back to the world. May the offerings that have been shared today create a new reality. Grow this church and ministry and provide relief for someone in need. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, try not to long too much for the past, nor have anxiety about what lies if we were to look back, we will see that God has carried us. God has moved us forward and never left us without what we needed to give, to, without what we needed for where God will have us be. If we know and truly believe that God is with us on this journey, we will not long for the past, but we belong for the future. The grace of God be with you all. Aloha.